in Ireland even and since the best uh, Irish two-year-old was cleaned out in the Dewhurst there's no real reason to believe that Jim Bolger will have Ivory Frontier uh, improved enough to win here. Now let's have a look at the betting. And Zaponic is now the 5-4 to four on favourite. Wharf is 7-1, to one, back from 15-2. to two. And Chattelworth, 91, out from 8. Arathia, steady on the 10-1 to one mark. Inchinore is 12-1 to one shot from 14s. And Emperor Jones and Pembroke both the 20s. Right win also a 20 to 1 chance, Revelation 25, Silver Wizard 33s along with Ivory Frontier, Bin Ashwar 66s with Petardia, nominated the outsider 100 to 1. And there he is. Uh, Zaphonic the second, of course, of those. That's Wharf leading him down. But uh, Pat Edry, well, at the moment, touch wood. He's taking a hold, but not a particularly wild one. What do you think? No, just got him nicely settled. Getting the tug in behind the uh, stable companion, or same owner, Carlos Rada, of Wharf. And, well, I should think Pat will be happy when he gets him down to the start, gets him switched off. And he'll have been pleased to have read in the papers this morning that right wind's going to go out and blaze a trail. Won't be the biggest surprise if Will Silver Wizard does likewise, because as you can see, the further he's gone, the uh, more of a tug he's given. He's certainly pulled very hard in his prep race where he's beaten by King Jambo. And uh, the quicker they go, the easier it's going to be for Pat. And there is Wharf leading Zaphonic down and looking at Zaphonic, he looks as loose as a goose going down to the start and a lot of people here watch the parade absolutely delighted with him and the heavy hitters are in for him and even £20,000 was laid by Roy Christie. £10,000 at even money, £5,500 to five on, it's now five to four on Zaphonic. It's now six to five on, six to five on Zaphonic, and 74 favourites have won in 184 runnings of the 2,000 guineas, 26 odds on winners. Bar the one, it's seven to one against Wharf, then nine to one Chadleworth, 10 to one Barathea, some money for Inchinore, into 12 to one from 14 to one, and 20 bar. But looking and seeing um, Zaphonic here, the crowd have seen for themselves, they're really lumping on now into Zaphonic. He was as loose as a goose! Well, I've got to say that uh, I wasn't too impressed with the way he was going down there. The further they got to uh, the stands, the harder he was pulling. And it's certainly going to make things an awful lot more difficult for Pat Edrin for himself if he doesn't settle. Anyway, that's Chattelworth. He's a horse who certainly tightened up for that run in the Craven. Looks plenty light enough, mind you. He's, um, he's obviously done plenty of work. Peter Chappelheim done plenty of work with this horse since. Well, uh, Tomo talked to Peter Chappelheim before racing and asked him uh, what has Chattelworth done since his run. Well, when I got him back, I sort of woke him up a bit. I'd been very easy on him, obviously, with his leg and everything. And... Uh, we woke him up and uh, really, this week he really has come to himself and he really is, he's, I think he's in top form, he's, he's in great form, he really is. What sort of horses does he work with, what sort of stuff has he done? Well, he always, he works with his, the two same lead horses they used last year for Rodrigo and Dr. Davis, Relentless Pursuit and Spanish Grandy. They might not be the greatest race horses in the world, but they can certainly gallop, especially when he's got to give them sort of two stone. And, uh, and he's been working with the horse of man yesterday and working well with him, really well. When Peter Ch refers to Chattelworth's leg, there is, of course, a screw in one of his legs, which uh, mending an injury which he suffered last year. But, touch wood, it seems to have worked. Well, there's uh, Frankie de Torre on Inchinore, who is, as I say, is in my opinion, tremendous clap of thunder. I don't know whether you've heard it. It sounds absolutely immediately over where we're sitting. And uh, I just hope it's not as loud in the horse's ears as it is in mine. Uh, Inchinore doesn't seem to be too worried about it. Well, uh, <clears throat> Tomo talked to Roger Charlton beforehand and asked how Inchinore had done since Newbury. 
Well, when he came back from, from Newbury, um, a few days afterwards, he gave an odd cough, which worried me. Um, but in himself, he's been in fantastic form. He looks great, uh, pleased with the way he's working, satisfied as much as one ever can be. That, that he's over whatever he had for a few days. Um, we scoped the horse, he was clean, we blood sampled him, everything was absolutely normal. And um, I hope he runs very well today. You know, but with ho odd horses in the yard coughing, you never really know. Any chance of reversing the Dewhurst form with Zephonic? Um, why not, yes. I don't see any reason why not. If Zephonic pulls, doesn't get the trip, we're right there to, to fill the... the, the, the the, you know, the first, second, third or fourth place. We'll be trying anyway. If Zephonic pulls, that's the question everyone's asking. How are Pat Edry's silken hands going to work? Are they going to save the energy that's needed from the dip? There's somebody <laughs> sheltering her father. Yeah. But now, uh, <clears throat> nobody's been in better form uh, all week than Walter Swinburne, and uh, Derek Thompson knew that Walter has ridden Wharf at home uh, since he last ran, and asked what sort of a feel he'd given him. Oh, a nice feel. Um, I rode him work uh, across the flat there last weekend, and he worked very well in ground that he's not really suited by in soft ground. and. Um, I think Mr. Cecil was pleased, so if he's pleased, that's good enough for me. Now, obviously, the $64,000 question is, what chance of beating the French hot pot Zephonic? Well, I think, um, you know, really, uh, strictly on the book, we've all got about seven, seven pounds or so to find on Zephonic. Um, I think if Zephonic's Zephonic, uh, we can't beat him, but funnier things have happened in racing, and he could easily come here and pull or, or do something, and, uh, you know, and if he does, I think my horse is the one to chase him and give him a race. And what about Emperor Jones, who beat you here at the Craven meeting? How confident are you of getting your revenge on him? Well, obviously, I've got to be three pounds better off, and Wharf had, I think, I believe, 12 weeks in his box. Um, he hasn't run since last July, and, you know, before that race, so it, it had looked like, you know, my horse would, you know, had more room for improvement, so we'll see. Zephonic now the 11 to 10 on favourite, Wharf is 7 to 1, Shuttleworth at 8, and Barathea at 10s. Itchinor is 12 to 1, Emperor Jones, Pembroke and Wright win all at 20s, and they go 25 to 1 bar those. And now Itchinor is into 10 to 1, open to 14s, Itchinor now a 10 to 1 shot. So the runners go into the stalls end for this. 1993 running of the 2000 Guineas and Petardia Blinker for the first time, one of the last in Pembroke into stall 13, that looks about it the favourites are phonic from stall 10 and they race away and uh, being given the lead by Inch and all the pace not strong but Leicester's going out there in front on Silver Wizard. Silver Wizard it is, the orange colours, and at this stage, Pat has got uh, Zephonic tucked in and only two or three behind. Nominator goes second, and then uh, in third, that's uh, the Chestnut Wharf, with uh, right wind going with that one in the orange colours, followed by uh, Ivory Frontier, and at this stage, Zephonic and Chadleworth are towards the rear, so too Petardia and Binajwa. But it's Silver Wizard and Leicester Piggott leading from Nominator, and then right wind the stand side with uh, Wharf showing up prominently, Revelations not that far off the pace, blue colours nearest to us, that's Ivory Frontier, white cap is Emperor Jones and, and Barathea the far side of that one, and Zephonic is in a line of four for last place, is going to have to be a very good horse to win from there, and it's Silver Wizard leading, Silver Wizard the leader and nominator there, one and two, followed by Wharf in third, Revelation, here goes Zephonic on the far side, on the left of the picture getting closer, he's on the extreme left now is Zephonic, and They've got two and a half furlongs to go. Nominator, Barathea, Zephonic on the left. He's absolutely pulling double. They've got uh, just a furlong and a half to go. And it's Zephonic now given the office. But Barathea is making a race of it. But Ederi gives the go on Zephonic. This is the tonic we're waiting to see. And it's Zephonic coming clear by two, three, four. Barathea in Adwar for places only. But this is a very good horse. This is Zephonic, the winner. Barathea a great run, second bit out, but Adwar, third, Batardia, four, so it was a time. Inchinor, six, and then Wharf, seven in the field. 
Trail back to Pembroke, who was last of all. Well, that was what we all wanted to see, those fans of Zephonic. Well, the omens, the cloud, the thunder, the lightning that was around the roof just before the start of this 1993 uh, 2000 Guineas had everybody on their toes. But Zephonic is absolutely in a class of his own. He has annihilated them. He's turned the most competitive field we've got into a possession. He really is a very good horse indeed. And the five to six on favorite to give Pat Hedery uh, his ninth, tenth classic win. Well, Hedery's ridden uh, Lomond Del Gran Senor to win this race. He's ridden Gun Grundy, Golden Fleece and Quest for Fame. He's ridden Polygamy and Scintillate. He's ridden Moon Madness and Too Long. But I don't think he'll ever ever ride a more impressive winner of a classic than this horse who came from last to first just being shown the whip but he's come away from the class field at a fast run race as well Leicester ensured that and he's come away in really splendid style second horse home was Varathea third horse home number two Bin Ajwad. this is simply a rout We knew the answer very soon after the stalls had opened, really, because it was clear that Zophonic was settling. He immediately, Pat Hedry dropped him out from the stalls, was among the last rank through the first two, three furlongs, and it was clear, we couldn't see him all that well, but it was clear that Zophonic was not fighting for his head as he did at Maison Lafitte. This ground suited him perfectly, he settled, and when the burst of acceleration came, it was every bit as impressive as it was last year in the Salomons and here in the Dewhurst Stakes. He's done everything asked of him and done it superbly. John, John was saying that, that if Pat Henry lives to be a hundred, he won't ride an easier winner, nor will he ride a better race, because he, it was down to his hands that uh, Zephonic settled so well, and when finally he pulls him out, follows exactly the same path as Walter Swinburne did on Sayadati, in fact, comes down a big gap over on the far side. He's now joined Barathea. Barathea looked like making a fight of it for a few strides, but nothing can fight with this fellow when he's going. He's really got another gear, and he moved into it to accelerate, and away he goes from Barathea. What a performance. Oh, it was an incredible performance, this. And I was saying that I don't think Pat Edry will ever ride an easier winner if he lives to be 100. I don't think he'll, that was of any race, never mind a 2,000 guineas. Well, Mr. Abdullah is never a man to say very much. He's an extremely modest retiring man, but he had said that he couldn't see how Zephonic was going to get beaten, and now that's been proved in public. So we're looking at a very proud and happy man, the man who's got the best horses in the whole world. Well, so often you have a good crop of two-year-olds and they don't train on, things go wrong, but that's not happened in this case.
and Zafonik is returned at 6 to 5 on favourite. It did touch 11 to 10 on the course, and the heavy hitters were certainly in for it. The second, Barathea, was a 10 to 1 chance, and how easily he would have won a 2,000 guineas if Zafonik had not turned up. The third